live. Hello, um, I'm live. This is kind of an experiment. Where's the camera? Um, this is kind of an experiment. Haven't really properly done this before, but I thought I'd give it a go. And I thought I'd talk about, well, I am going to talk about sewing with knits. And when I say sewing with knits, I'm looking over here because I think that's where the chat happens. Um, when so when I say sewing with knits, I don't mean like stretchy jersey fabric, although it could be that. I mean when you sew with things like this, like I showed you in the last video. So what I wanted to say, the main thing that I wanted to say was there was a person called Karen Price and she said something so brilliant. It's kind of like the main reason why I've come on here. So she said, and she was quite right, that if I hadn't have cut up my jumper first, which you see in the previous video where I show you how to upcycle this jumper, she said, if you stitch, like say you were to stitch two in to, no, not two inches, one inch of interfacing down the center of your jumper or wherever you're going to cut up your jumper to turn it into a cardigan and make an opening. If you bond your interfacing strip on there first, before you cut it up, genius then you don't have to spend ages like matching up the two sides, do you? Karen Price, you're really clever. You've definitely got more brain cells than me at the moment. So I'll show you this whilst we get going. Now, like I said, I've, I've not really done much kind of live stuff and I want to do live stuff. So I want to understand how it works. So in that video, the, the video, I uploaded it. Friday, I showed you how I had this Alexandra McQueen jumper, which I did like, but I wasn't really wearing because when jumpers are like this, I don't know, I feel barrel like. I'm not saying I'm big. <gasps> Hi, Kim. Kim Watts, hello. Gosh, that's so good. Hello. Hopefully, you can, yeah, you'll hear me say hello, won't you? Yes. Anyway, so. I wanted to make it into a cardigan. So before, let me put it back on. <laughs> oh, no editing. Um, see how many ums I say. Stop saying ums. So before New Year, whilst I still had that dreaded lurgy and even less brain cells, um, I cut up my Alexandra McQueen jumper and totally regretted it. And then stuffed it in a cupboard because I couldn't cope with the fact that I cut up a really expensive jumper. But then when I felt a bit better, and this is something that I do, I thought I'm, I am just going to go for it and do a good job and make it into a cardigan. Now, obviously, this is a bit extreme because it has a weird neckline on it. But, yeah. So. <laughs> cardigans I find are much more wearable than jumpers and if you put a zip in it you can still well no you can't really this jumper even though I've put a zip in it double ended zip because I much prefer my openings on coats and cardigans to sort of splay out if I tuck in these bits so no editing. Gosh, we'll see how that goes. Um, I can still wear it as a jumper. Don't you think that's really good? And I actually prefer it as a jumper. And I'm going to turn around and I'm not going to know how it looks at the back. OK, look. So do you see how that is a lot more flattering? How it comes out kind of a line. I really just feel like I'm just babbling. Anyway, let's see. <laughs> so so go back so I've got two things to say about that you don't have to put a zip in it 
You do, however, have to finish it off nicely. Can you see that? You have to finish it off nicely because it is important to finish off your upcycle projects nicely. Put collars out. Um, but it doesn't need to be a zip. It can easily just be like, you know, before you face that raw edge, when you cut up your jumper, when you put the bond web on to make sure it didn't unravel, um, put two little loops, put two little loops up there at the top and then put your facing on. Because I'm not undoing this zip. It does undo. I'm mainly having this splaying out look here like this. Anyway, I feel like I'm being really boring. <gasps> Vicky! Hello, Vicky Sher Sheridan. I know who you are. I just don't really read very well. Thank you very much. Looks great from the back. I know it does, doesn't it? I like it like that too. So let's do it one more time looking at the back. But I've got a great big pile of knitted stuff over here to bore you with. Please go. Feel free to go away. But I'd like you to stay. Gosh, I really am talking to myself, aren't I? Did I tuck in those bits? Yeah. Look, that is really flattering. So there's no way that it has to be a zip. I really never do up that zip. So, yeah, so much nicer. Look, it's kind of going out and getting a bit of a drape at the side. And if it was like that, no, I don't like that. My hips are too big. Right. So I'm going to show you something else that you have seen before as well, quite recently. And it's this cardigan, but I'm going to put it on for you. And you're going to see my arms. Don't like my arms. Oh, look at those arms. Yep. So this cardigan, this cardigan, look in the camera. Let me come a bit closer. So I don't know if any of you watched it. Now, I did it on an overlocker. Yeah, finished it off on an overlocker. Now. I do think it would have been neater if I'd have taken time and, you know, like so sewed on the band first, then pressed it over, hemmed it, bonded it, bonded it in place first with bonded web, thinly cut strips, um, and then hand sewed it. But it's for my teenager and she really wasn't bothered. Should I put it on inside out? Not that way. So you can see. So there is a full tutorial, which I do want an overlocker. Come on, someone ask a question. I need to get used to it. Um, look, so I did all of that in one shot. So I made it up in a two dimensional way. This is inside out. And I know it's inside out, everybody, um, in a two dimensional way. And then I sewed the sleeves last, which is in general, how I like to finish off, oops, finish off t-shirts and jumpers and cardigans and, and stuff. So that is a tutorial. It's called How to Sew a Cardigan, in case you've missed it. Um, now, buttonholes. Lots of people don't like doing buttonholes. Hmm. I am thinking about that, actually, because... Lots of people really don't like doing buttonholes. So there must be a way where you leave a little gap in your seam and then do it on the other side as well. And so that becomes a buttonhole. Anyway, I'm currently thinking about that. So the colour of this is much nicer than it's looking on the screen there. It's very kind of pinky, but I think we're being drowned out by the blue. Gosh, it was so boring. Let me show you some wowie stuff. So wowie stuff, I haven't got an actual tutorial of it because it used to be on my, see the thing is, so I'm digressing now. So the, the thing is, I will talk about this. The thing is, come on, ask me a question. The thing about this live thing, in fact, if anybody knows, the thing about live on YouTube, I, you can't ask, I need to hear your voices, don't I? I mean, I'm seeing like questions down here. Um, but the good thing about Zoom is, is we can have a bit of banter. Does anyone know? Does that exist on YouTube at all? You know, like like on Zoom. 
Anyway, do you like this? Yeah, go on. Do you like this? Thumbs up if you like it or ask a question or tell me in the, the chat. So what this is, is no, there's going to be a bit of sour grapes now. So for, for anyone, I so feel like I'm talking to myself. For anyone that's been with us for 10 years, 10 years, I think nine years ago, maybe eight years ago, I did a tutorial on how to um, upcycle a vest top, which is fitted. Missoni. Yeah, it is Missoni. And yeah, it is really expensive. It's This is Missoni fabric. Oh, Heidi. Thank you very much, Heidi. Oh, it's so nice when people chat but I'd like to hear your voices. Upcycling is great. Yeah, it is, Heidi. Oh, Tam, thank you very much, Tam. Right, let's get on with that. But I will reply, Kim. Yeah, it really has got Y factor. Wow factor. So let me let me just say, so nine years ago, I've got a tutorial. Oh, hello, Nicola. Hi. I've got a tutorial. Well, yes, I have got a tutorial. I'm not very good with that editing, but I'm not very good at editing either. Um, fortunately, everyone's out of the ha of flat because they think I was nuts talking to myself. Right. I've got a tutorial way back, eight years ago, nine years ago, using a fitted, stretchy vest top. And I show you how to attach really simple i mean they're like rectangles with a bit of a, a shape at the the bottom of the armhole yeah really simple how to add these sleeves and this particular top i've seen a pattern for and in 2021 i think i am going to be going right back to to how i used to talk about you kind of don't need patterns for lots of things you really don't you know, so many, so many things I do, I'll probably get done for this. I, I either take apart or cut up the side seams of regular clothes and just copy them, just trace them off. And the way to see how they're made is um, in the taking apart of them. So what you do in reverse, well, what you do when you take it apart, if you reverse that process, that's how to make them. Right. Anyway, so so I have a tutorial on how to make this. Yeah, puff sleeve top, upcycling a vest top. But this used to be a tutorial on my website that that sort of come down because I've got to create a new website. But yes, who asked the question now? Can't remember. Um, yes, it is Missoni. Yes, it is Missoni fabric, but we have to say Missoni type because we get done by Missoni otherwise. Heidi, the decent construction. I know. No, I said that, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, but it's so, so true. How yes. Well, <laughs> I do you think, tell me actually, camera, do, do you think I should because I talk about it all the time. Just look at ready-made clothes, take them apart and sew them back together. Should I do, I made some skirts, Kim, I made some skirts from, oh, did you? I'd love to see them. What, the A-line skirts? That was a bit of a crazy video. My sister hates being on camera and I had to bribe her with so many clothes, I promised to make her, for her to do that tutorial. and. Um, yeah, that's why I said she was real, because I talk about her a lot, but you don't ever see her. Anyway, that was a tutorial on my website, just like a step by step. But my website's been taken down. But if you want to know how to make this. The fabric's from Joel and some but I don't get it from that because um, it's quite expensive. Well, get it from there if you want. You only need half a meter. But I've noticed that they sell it everywhere, everywhere now. Yes, please, Tam. OK, well, that is the way that I'm going to be going. I am going to be doing I mean, I have got a couple of patterns coming out when I've saved up for them. Um, but I want to talk more about don't buy patterns. 
look at your clothes. You know, only yesterday, my daughter, we bought her online this lovely velour kind of rugby top. Um, so it has a little placket opening here, a ribbed collar. The rest of it is velour. It's basically like making this cardigan, actually. Um, and I spent like 40 something quid from Urban Outfitters. It's really nice. But if I was making that, that really would be about £10 because it's cropped with long sleeves and it is about a metre of velour, stretchy velour fabric. Um, anyway, I must go back to this. What I want to say is if you like this, because whenever I wear it, I've actually lent it to lots of people. Whenever I'm. Whenever I wear this, look, I've kept, can you see that the selvage was like a, a zigzaggy, a zigzaggy sort of shape. Yeah, it's a knit. Shall I go really close? It's a, an, a proper knitted, because that's supposed to be what I'm talking about today. Um, it's a proper knitted fabric, but you buy it on the roll. And they normally say it's Missoni style fabric. Classic textiles do it, but they're not open. But I've seen it in loads of places. And if I remember any online places, I will comment somewhere below. But I can't think right, right now. But what I want to say is if you want to make this tank top, I've got the tutorial on how to sew a vest top stroke dress. I think that's what it's called. And what did I make it in? I made it out of a linen, which I might have cut on the cross. I don't know. But um, but you could <laughs> you could turn your woven fabrics into stretchy fabrics by making when you make tops of them or whatever, just cut the fabric on the cross because then it becomes a stretchy fabric. But you just use a woven needle anyway. So this. You can do exactly the same thing. So look how I finished it off. Can you see? So I, I actually used, I had an old cardigan, which I might show you today. Um, it was like a granddad cardigan and I had knitted stuff left over. So that's why there's that join there. Okay. So um, look at the back. It's got a little bit of a racer back on it. Uh, Yeah, I use that as ribbing. So long as you cut across the stretchiness, fold it, press it, don't stretch it when you when you press it, then you can use that as ribbing. So watch how to sew a puff sleeve top, I think, or how to make a puff sleeve top for this top. And for this, watch how to sew a vest stroke dress, I think. Quite nice, look. It's quite nice, isn't it? Thank you, Kim. Yeah, it's nice. Um, oh, I must stop saying, um, I didn't realise it must be a nervous thing. Right, that that Alexandra. Oh, hi, Richie. Oh, no. He's like a big sewing expert with a hundred machines. He'll be really critical. <laughs> Hello, Richie. Lovely to see you. Um, oh, look, they're the ums again. Tell me off saying the ums. Right, right. Let's replace it with right. That Alexandra McQueen top that I showed before and also my previous video, I copy it. So I'm talking about sewing knits today whilst experimenting with live YouTube that I really don't know anything about. And I don't like that you can't live ask me questions so I can hear your voice. So I've got a tutorial on how to copy that Alexandra McQueen top that has a ridiculously large neck. Uh, okay, and Richie, we we were just showing this, and I was saying you can <gasps> Elizabeth. Hello, Elizabeth. I was just saying that you can watch how to sew a vest top and make it in Missoni fabric with ribbed edges to do that, and you can watch how to sew a puff sleeve top upcycle top I used a vest and then I added puff sleeves to it and it's quite a flattering top but more when you add puff sleeves to a vest top it really is a nice 
fitted undergarment. Ah, oh, hello, oh, Luciette. Is that how I pronounce your name? Hello. Oh, and Richie Jane. Now, I didn't say that you were critical. I said that you're an expert, Richie James. Uh, yeah, and you do help people. Right, so we've done those. We might have to bring those back up again. So this is too small for me. So I'm talking about sewing with knitted, proper knitted garments and blankets, you know, like actual knitted stuff. I don't mean like stretchy jersey fabric. Um, oh, thanks. Love you too, Richie. Um, look, here come the arms again. Maybe it's a nervous thing. Quite nervous. So I'm talking about that. And I'm going to go back because it was really important what I said at the beginning. And I've got a runny nose. What I said at the beginning was in my previous video where I cut up my Alexandra McQueen top totally regretted it stuffed it in a cupboard full of regret before new year and whilst having the lurgy i got it out recently and i showed you how to deal with knitted fabric iron on um interfacing to stabilize it and then how i put in a zip yeah so karen price karen price commented and said a genius thing that I didn't think of saying if before you cut up any ready-made knitted garment I am the interfacing on first so cut it double the size double the width so a long strip put like a two centimeter down there and then cut it up the middle or or if you're doing it diagonally iron the strip on diagonally and then cut it up. So I just repeated that because I think it's really important. And the editing of videos on YouTube isn't fantastic. Anyway, I'm going to try on this really tiny top <laughs> that wasn't really made for me. But let's see. I only see my fat arms as well. But I'll, I've got to show it to you because this was made out of a tiny weenie cot blanket. Oh, I don't look at my arms. So it was made out of a tiny weeny cot blanket and it's called something like make a cardigan out of a cot blanket. But again, you know, when you sew with knitted, knitted stuff or upcycle knitted stuff, it's really quick. Do you want me to come a bit closer? Look. And so I just um, when I did the shape on it, I continued the collar bit so it could become like a shawl collar, but it's not folding back. So honestly, this sort of thing. You know, like it takes minutes to make. Now, another thing that uh, I made out of a blanket, it is a more, oh, that way, it is a more closely, uh, whoops, closely knitted uh, blanket, but. Um, I have sewn a knitted, this is Richie talking, the super expert person. I have sewn a knitted garment before. I totally regretted it. It stretched and went, yeah, yeah. Well, that's why, you see. And the reason why I showed a video of um, making a jumper into a cardigan is because I saw there were loads and loads of them on the internet that they're all like five minutes long and they don't cover any of that stuff. So my video is really boring, really long, but I've kind of dissected the process. But the only bit that I regret in that video is that I didn't say, first of all, before you cut, before you cut your opening, iron on a strip of that interfacing and you essentially cut up the middle of that interfacing, Elizabeth says, oh, I hope you don't mind me saying who you are. When the Scandinavian knit, oh, when Scandinavian knit in the round um, and then cut it, they straight stitched two rows on each side. Oh, well, that would make sense, wouldn't it? I, I am, I am feeling better and feel free. <laughs> I mean, it may not seem relevant, 
I'm like one of those old ladies at bus stops. When you've been ill for quite a long time, all you want to do is talk about that illness all the time. But I'm not going to today unless you ask me a question. But it did take four weeks to fully, fully recover. And my partner still has got breathlessness issues. Anyway, let's talk about this. <laughs> let's go a bit closer, but don't look at my wrinkly neck. So I have a tutorial for this. And um, what I did was, well, because what I was asked to do was do a tutorial by lovely Laura of how to sew uh, the geo dress. But I'm not very good with kind of straight up and downy clothes. Look, everything I wear comes out because my smallest bit is here and my biggest bit is my hips in proportion to my height. So just so you know, that's why I do this splaying out business and clothes that go out. And the bucket coat does not make you look like you've got big hips because the, the bucket falls in a place where you're not, you know, you're not going to be big down there. Where your thighs are anyway I'm digressing so much so this this i made using a blanket which was knitted ish uh so and it ended up being a dress that became a cardigan so because it was knitted when i faced it i actually faced it in some leftover knitted fabric and on the neck look I've put some stretchy ribbing on the neck and it is my intention oh, I still haven't done to put some sort of little thing there so it does the splaying out thing so this tutorial is how to sew that probably gives you more of an idea of how it's supposed to be um how to sew the geo dress by by so different because there is like a tricky bit around here but it is a nice pattern. Anyway, I've, oh yeah, this is the geo dress as well. But this isn't the knit that I was talking about. Do you want to have a look? Yeah, quite nice. So that splodgy stuff is because I really like using selvages, don't you? I like I like using selvages a lot. Right, I'm going to put a cardigan back on. Oh gosh. So if you haven't got any more. If you haven't got any more questions, um, what I want to know is if I do a live, I'm thinking about doing some live stuff because I've got like an overhead overhead camera thing that connects to the computer. So when I when I do my my Zoom classes, you know, they're they're looking like this and there's the overhead for the uh, details except people can speak. Ronnie, the vlogger. There you go. Ronnie, the vlogger. You asked me to say your name. Um, and Richie James. Yeah, didn't you know? Richie, yeah, well, I have had COVID, but I, I tried not to refer to it in any titles on YouTube because uh, I don't think they like it. I'm well, not that it make any difference to the hits that I get, but... Um, yeah, they don't like it, Richie. I'm spending. Yeah, don't leave the house. COVID was horrible, horrible. You asked the question and I am an old granny talking about illnesses. So I am just going to briefly tell you. Um, so how it hit me was completely different to my partner. We got it exactly the same time, Richie. He got it and it hit his lungs. He had breathing difficulties. Neither of us had a temperature, but we both had the shivers and, and body aching and were really unwell for 10 days, definitely for 10 days. Um, his was all coughing, chest stuff and body aching. Mine was, oh, body really, really aching. Couldn't eat for three days, couldn't drink really for three days, but you have to or you die. So I had ice cubey things. Uh, I chucked up 10 times, lost loads of weight. Um, and my kidneys killing me, kidneys, glands really killing me. Not very nice. So I don't know what you think about COVID, but it's. I could tell it was uh, attacking my weak parts and I could tell it was attacking his weak parts. But neither of us got hospitalised and it went on for four weeks. Right, no more. 
So I want to do some more live stream, but I don't know if I should talk about things that I've made or if I should do tutorials. So I am interested to hear what you think. And if you do think it's just not worth it and it's just too boring, I won't be offended. Just say, uh, yeah. So I'm going to do more tutorials on not using patterns, how to copy your existing clothes and stuff like that. But I have got a couple of patterns that are waiting to come out. But don't buy them. Just copy your clothes like this. Have you seen? I'm not going to say the name. So I copied, and you smoke, Richie. <gasps> yeah, I had pneumonia two years ago. Oh, you've got asthma. Although my friend has asthma and she got COVID, and she was fine. Yeah, she was quite overweight as well. She might watch this. <laughs> anyway, Elizabeth, I know I will work out what's best for me, but it is difficult. Every live will be different. The good thing about live is that people receive notifications and I'm struggling with people seeing my videos. Anyway, so I just want to say I've seen a pattern out there for this cardigan. But when I made this cardigan, it's so easy. And I just copied my daughter's cardigan because it is actually for her. So, you know, people go crazy by patterns. So I'm going to wrap it up. That's a professional term. I'm going to wrap it. No, no American accents. I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you. Thank you for commenting. So go look and see what Karen Price said on my last video. If you didn't hear what I said about the tip. Um, before you cut up any opening in knitted fabric, iron on a strip of interfacing first. Because what we did, we did it afterwards because I'd already cut up the thing when I was had a crazy moment. So thank you for watching. Dumpty dumpty dum. See you again soon. I'm going to lunge forward now <laughs> so you can see all my wrinkles because that's the only way I think that I'm aware of to stop the video. Bye. Sorry it was so long. Bye. Bye, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully it'll be a bit less boring next time. Bye. Bye, Kim. Oh, thank you, Kim.